I wanted to quickly give you as an update. I'm sure most of you don't care, but I've been following this story like an absolute hawk and it's absolutely fascinated me for all the wrong reasons. Obviously, the conclusion was pretty sad because the young boy called Jay Slater from the UK who went missing in Tenerife, unfortunately was found, but he was not found alive. He was found at the bottom of some ravine somewhere in Tenerife. And basically, um, the conclusion was that he likely fell over um, from the hill that he was walking, trying to get back home to his hotel. So the whole story around it has been quite fascinating to kind of observe from the outside in. Loads of conspiracy theories surrounding it. But essentially, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the conclusion was that he most likely just tripped and fell. So no foul play, nothing sinister, nothing untoward, just unfortunate accident that occurred that kind of resulted in this young kid falling and falling tragically to his death and it's now been confirmed um courtesy of a coroner um the family actually had to do two autopsies which i guess was quite distressing in its own self because i think from what i can surmise the autopsy that took place in spain the family weren't happy with it and i think in part it has to do with people online i'm not gonna lie i think the trolls and the flipping amateur sleuths and the true crime fanatics have been muddying the waters and confusing things so much and wanting the story to be way more layered and way more complicated than it actually is and i think them constantly going on and on and on about you know the nature of, of how he was found what led to him being missing in the first place i think is what made the parents doubt that the first autopsy in spain wasn't legit because throughout the entire process i could never understand why there was a lack of like i wouldn't say respect but there was a lack of there was a lack of like there was a lack of belief that the spanish authorities were doing their best to find this kid i was thinking to myself like spain regardless of where you're at it's in their best interest to make sure that this issue is resolved and it's not something sinister because they rely quite heavily on tourism they actually need the tourism of especially the uk people to kind of go there so they don't want people to get scared away of going there thinking there's some there's some nefarious you know weed smuggling gang that's out there trying to abduct flipping 19 year olds they don't want that so they want to resolve it quickly and in general why would you think just because they're from another country that the police force there even though they're probably a bit more relaxed maybe they have different ways of doing things that they don't know what they're doing i never understood that but there's a weird I'm not, even sure, I'm not even sure if you're going to call it xenophobia, racism. I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, it was a strange attitude around what some people were reacting to when it came to Spanish authorities. Because I felt like when I was first kind of like digging into the story, I felt like the Spanish authorities had already leaked to the press or to some people that they immediately thought that this kid most likely tripped and fell. I'm pretty sure I remember hearing quite early on from Spanish people like from the area in Tenerife basically who work in the police force who are familiar with that landscape familiar with that surroundings who basically said hey most likely this kid ended up getting lost it's easy to get lost here especially in the rural places it's really hot here the landscape is really rugged and rough and he most likely just fell and we have to find him quickly because he doesn't have much time to survive in the wilderness i think that's what they all said no one believed the story that he got murdered by these like rap these these um boys who are friends with a rapper called potter paper like they didn't believe it at all so um now the family have a second autopsy has got confirmed by the uk coroners that basically said yeah most likely he did trip and fall so it's courtesy of birmingham mail news the headline is jay slate is real cause of death announced by uk coroners after body has been flown home that's a picture there of jay um slater with his mum and i think that's his brother there on the left hand side it continues it says jay slater's cause of death has been announced by uk coroners as his heartbreaking family heartbroken family sorry make a special request for the brits teen's funeral um slater age 19 went missing in the canary islands in mid-june before being uh four four uh, before being four four weeks later after frenetic searches the 19 year old apprentice bricklayer was in tenerife with pals for his first holiday abroad and the trio including lucy law and brad hargreaves visited the rave before jay went missing in the mountainous region of the european holiday island jay's body was flown back home in the uk last week and his funeral was set to take place on august 10th dozens gathered outside the local church to pay respects to jay slater um, with yellow balloons after his body was found um in july his mum debbie duncan 55 dad 58 and jay's brother zach all returned home from the island last week now a post mortem in the uk confirmed that jay slater died because of a traumatic hand injury consistent with a fall from a height now they haven't confirmed how he fell they haven't confirmed how he fell i know it doesn't really confirm how he fell 
but it's saying most likely he did fall to his death which is a tragic 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 conclusion it's one thing i think i remember seeing someone say that a lot of teenagers or a lot of people in general go missing abroad and they never ever get found so the fact that he's been found is a blessing in itself but the fact that he'd been found and the nature and what led to his death is the most heartbreaking part right you're surrounded by hundreds of thousands of people your age and from the same walk of life that you're from and bloody blah, blah celebrating the end of your college a levels in your you're heading into your adulthood in one moment next moment you're out and afters with some dodgy drug dealers and the next moment you end up dying somewhere and you end up your body being found at the bottom of, of a ravine life does really have such crazy twists and turns in it it continues here uh any more texts what do you have a text is that it no more texts cool well i guess that's it yeah so his body was found at the bottom of a ravine oh no there he is. there's more text why is this a big cut cool so the the other section of the article says as follows the coroner's report said his death would be would have been instant jay's loved ones wrote a loving son and debbie and warren our cherished brother zach and brother-in-law jessica a treasured grandson dawn june and late dougie a much-loved nephew glenn and catty and a dear cousin maddie and tilly and a loyal friend to many jay will be very sadly missed by those who knew him those attending are invited to wear something blue in his memory in a statement released by the get state to home go Find Me page debbie said hello everyone thank you for all your kindness and support and condolences in this list of tragic event and dead body has been found we are overwhelmed with grief and are grateful for your support so in the end in the end he just tripped and fell on the way home in the end in an uh, in a foreign land um in a very unfamiliar kind of environment he unfortunately tripped and fell to his death and like i said previously i just hope i just hope off the back of this forget all the true crime people because i think people are like oh i hope the true crime people stop with their conspiracy theories and they stop peddling all of these fucking narratives like no they don't not gonna do that the internet is made for that sort of thing if it's not true crime people people on social media so that's never gonna stop people are always gonna speculate always gonna speculate and i think this particular case had many reasons why people should speculate but i think what you can really say for sure of this lessons learned would be number one be careful who you go on holiday with because i would say this aloud i think he had pretty shitty friends pretty shitty friends in that there's no circumstances where you go and the lad goes on his first a trip abroad with his friends first one not his second not his third not his fourth not his fifth his first one ever and his friends go out with him at night and don't come home with him together that's not on at all that should be unacceptable that's never acceptable especially if it's your first lad's holiday or first holiday with your friends that should never be on the cards your friends should always look out for you there should always be one point of contact in your friendship group who's maybe the less high the less drunk whatever who can kind of gather everybody around wrangle you flipping crazy cats and get you back to your accommodation to do what needs to be done even if it means you have to call the dealer to come to your flipping apartment it doesn't matter going to other places should never be on number two the other people that he's surrounded with he he unfortunately i also think he unfortunately met just shitty dealers because i've been out in situations sometimes where you might end up at dealers places for an afters maybe to pick up and stuff and usually they're sound as fuck either they're sound and don't mind chilling or they're about the business and they just give you the stuff and you're on your way but he unfortunately met some very dodgy scrupulous characters like that ayub guy like i watched a live stream of that ayub guy i think he's kind of somali or whatever who's friends with potter paper talking about the whole thing and basically i don't know kind of trying to enjoy and bask in the attention from the jay slater death and stuff and i'd not i don't want him to show remorse because he's got nothing to do with the issue but the lack of just concern the lack of you know sensitivity around the whole thing was just really gross to hear him the way he was speaking and acting and stuff i was just thinking he was unlucky he had friends who didn't necessarily care about his well-being and kind of did their own thing and let him do his own thing um he was also unlucky that he bumped into some sh pretty wanky and you know um piece of shit dealers who probably you know would probably sell their own mum down the river if it meant getting money up and whatever it may be and he was just super unlucky that according to what i remember reading he went the wrong way when he left the airbnb if he would have went the right way he might have been found that's the problem i think if i'm not mistaken when he left the airbnb he went north and he was trying to go south you know that's where he should have went he should have went back where he came from but he went the wrong way to begin with and then obviously one percent battery like you know especially these days i'm sure some of you guys understand like when you don't have your phone or your phone's not charged or you don't have network or coverage or wi-fi you can essentially be missing you're basically un 
you know, uncontactable. So you can only imagine how much stressful it must have been for a kid who's 19, who lives his entire life through his phone, um, his friends in a foreign place, low battery, no network, doesn't know where he is. All that stress going on in your head, you're coming down. It could have resulted in whatever happened. But hopefully, especially for my fellow British people out there who can sometimes be a little bit reckless when they go out, this should be a lesson to all people just to be a little bit more careful about where you go especially if it's your first trip ever like you know first festivals first abroad trip first rave you just really need to take things a little bit slowly maybe ramp them up you know little by little as need be throughout the night but you should be taking it a little bit more slowly have a bit more care about what you're doing because unfortunately sometimes if you let your if you let your guard down a little bit if you're not really on it if you're not really focused if you're not really doing the right thing sometimes it can end really fatally like this so unfortunately it ended the way it did i'm glad they've got some sort of closure from it um but it is quite sad to see how it all kind of played out it is quite sad to see how it all kind of played out but it is also a reminder that sometimes especially in these sort of cases it can be fun to maybe speculate on the conspiracy theories but it's interesting how often usually the most logical conclusion is usually the most correct one you know it's not it's not sexy it's not very exciting it's not very interesting but no you know you know what i mean but usually those are the most conclusion and from the minute one from the moment i saw certain people online especially spanish people that live there basically saying no nah, the terrain out there is crazy it doesn't look like it on images online but if you're out here you'll know like it's very hilly it's mountainous rocky everything you can slip and fall very easily and you can just imagine like you're walking along a side of a road and it doesn't actually look like it's that high of a mountain you slip and then as you're falling you realize oh shit this is actually an absolute crazy rock rock face you know like a cliff face sorry i'm actually tumbling down the side of this mountain and by the time you know you you kind of realize what's happening it's already over for you so um r.i.p to jay slater r.i.p to jay slater hopefully lessons are learned for all parties included hopefully lessons are learned for all parties included but guess what i doubt it i friggin doubt it